You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey you guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's something about the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Heroes Advent Ray's Path. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into the sexy dragon, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> ah, lest I forget. Now that you can do magic, Cassian, someone must have given you an elemental crystal. Oh yeah, you're right. I, I do have that with me. May I see it, then? Of course. You promptly took the crystal out and handed it to Alyssa as she briefly inspected it. Hmm, fascinating. This bears the handiwork of Alex, is it not? Alexander Piratus Aegis? Yeah. Wait, Aegis? Like Aegis Mines? Yes, one and the same. Why? Had no one told you about this? Not even Max? I don't think so. I always knew that Alex probably had some connections to powerful people in the city, judging by the picture of his family in Alaric's office. But I never would have guessed that he's the son of, Aegis, of the Aegis mine owner. I suppose you wouldn't suspect that on your own. But it all makes sense, no. A scholar with such aptitude is quite the worthy heir to the Aegis family, the Aegis, Aegis legacy. I agree, he's a really smart guy. No, well, even if he can say weird things at times. I'm sure he means well deep down. Here, this crystal he made for you. It's quite an interesting replica of the Guardian crystal. You mean this is a miniature version of that? Indeed, more or less so. More precisely, I can tell that he based this upon the Vitreous Apparitor, one of the first inceptions of the Guardian Crystal. What's that? It means glass attendant. Think of, a, think of someone that would, that would escort you safely through your voyage of this land. So it used to be a protective charm for one person? In a sense, the previous sages were known for their warding incantations that can fend off meteor showers from above. When their times had come to pass, they bestowed upon the common folk these protective charms as mementos of their contributions to this world. Sadly, much like everything else, the charms deteriorate over time, losing its warding properties as a result. Thus, our scholars have long created these makeshift crystal amulets, serving the same purpose of protecting its bearer. However, it would take so much more to make something also able to protect an entire region, while also able to sustain itself against nether influence. That was when I stepped in to offer my counsel, and the blueprint for the crystal you see today. <clears throat> but, back to these crystals. One of the troubles of supplying everyone in the land with these was that they had to be custom-made, tailored to the specific person in mind. Otherwise, the crystal would immediately lose its potency since it cannot resonate with its bearer. That's really impressive. Does that mean Alex made this just for me? Highly likely so, I'd surmise. Perhaps he'd notice the implications and turn to the crystal to and turn the tune to the crystal to your specific frequency. Being this caliber, it's not quite as potent as the Guardian crystal itself, but it should serve its purpose well. She held the crystal for a moment before closing her palm on it. Then she seemed to close her eyes and channeled something into it. As she opened her palm again, the crystal began to float and hover before her. You could hear a faint hum emanating from the crystal as it suddenly shone and glimmered brilliantly. Alyssa then gestured to the side as one of the guardian as one of the guards approached and knelt down before her with a sword in his hands. And as if on cue, the crystal immediately gravitated towards the blade and embedded itself onto an empty gem socket. Finally, Alyssa opened her eyes and graced you with a smile as she took the blade from the guard and presented it to you. Here, Cassian, take the sword. You stepped forth and reached out to the sword. As soon as you touched the hilt, a surge of energy coursed through your body, rendering you visibly shaken, though not as devastating as touching the Guardian Crystal itself. I've amplified the resonance on this crystal. It shall not only channel your element, but also those you wish to resonate with. This sword was also imbued with magical crystal shards within its fine steel, allowing it to channel your elemental power. May this serve you well on your journey, Hero Cassian. Whoa, thank you, I mean Lady Spring. You took the sword after giving a shallow bow to Alyssa, who nodded back at you in acknowledgement. Stefano, could you call Maxwell, Dimitri, Raymond, and Alexander from the 4th Division here? I'd like to have a word with them, if you will. Yes, milady. I'll summon them right away. The guard then went on his way before returning with your group. He exchanged a knowing glance with Ray before returning to his, to his position elsewhere. Max and the others then approached as they knelt before Alyssa. <laughs> Lady Spring, what is it that you require? My team is ready to serve you. Max, please, no need to talk so seriously. Stand up, please. Stand up, all of you. I am quite pleased to see all of you here in person. The pleasure is all mine, Your Excellency. Nice to meet you, Lady Spring. It's quite an honor to see you in person, Lady Eostria. Please, no need to be so formal. You may call me by Alyssa. 
Despite my current identity, I suppose you all have known of me as Max's lady friend who lives in the forest. Oh. Quite an astute assessment, Lady Alyssa. Well, I've gathered you all, to all today to discuss Cassian's involvement in our current affairs. Let us talk it over some afternoon tea, shall we? Through here. You were led to a different part of the Inner Sanctum, away from the Guardian Crystal. Where you ended up felt like a private garden of sorts, even if with its own self-contained meadow. You couldn't help but notice that wherever Alyssa stepped, flowers and grass began to sprout and bloom at her feet. Even the wind seemed to carry a sweet scent from her, as if she herself was a blossoming flower. You all sat down around a large table that was set amidst the meadow. Several butlers came forth with tea sets and began filling up the teapots. Another one brought plates of whole cakes on top of his arms, gracefully balancing them before placing on them, them on the table. Thank you so much, Andra. Lynn and John, your service has been impeccable. Alyssa gave each of the butlers a nod as they in turn replied with a graceful bow before stepping away. Now, please, enjoy, all of you. Would you like some tea, Cassian? Nah, I'm good. I can get it myself. N nonsense. You're all guests here. One second, y'all. Water time. All right, y'all, and we are back. Let's jump back into it, shall we? Okay. Would any of you like some tea? The others glanced at each other awkwardly before Alex just shrugged and replied. Well, in that case, I'd like some, please, Lady Alyssa. Oh, extra sugar as well, if you will. All right, here you go. Alex? What? It's not every day that you get to sit in a tea party with Lady Austria, let alone being served tea by her. Carpe diem, I'd say. Huh, never thought you could say stuff like that, Al. You could feel Max glaring daggers at Alex, but Alyssa's chuckle seemed to dispel that tension almost immediately. <laughs> it's fine, you all. If anything, it glads me that Alex is still as eager as ever. Well, if anything, I'd guess that'd make him quite the simpleton. Hmm. Would you like some tea as well, Dimitri? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, sorry for the troubles, madam. No need to be so tense now, Dimitri. Here you go. Alyssa, I apologize for the rudeness, but could we please get to the point? Patience, Max. You know I would much rather not rush things. Understood, ma'am. And so Alyssa took her time to pour everyone a cup of tea and also giving everyone a slice of cake before sitting down. Well, now that everyone's had their share, please enjoy. I made the cake myself. Truly, a cake from Lady Austria herself. As Alex began to savor his slice of cake bit by bit, you took a look at yours. It was a sponge cake with whipped cream in between the layers. It looked quite delicious, and you could already pick up the floral aroma gently wafting from the slice. And from the way Alex's eyes lit up, you knew this was something good. Eagerly, you picked up your fork and went for a bite. Mmm! Almost immediately, the cake melted in your mouth. The creaminess was just right and not too sweet. There was a bit of tanginess that contrasted the stronger the stronger floral aroma, but neither of which was too overpowering. You could almost imagine yourself laying on a lush field, staring up into the sky, a gentle wind caressing your face, carrying a soothing scent of spring flowers. Wow, this is divine! Not even the best bakery at the market district can make something like this. You're right! It's on another level! Max really wasn't kidding when he talked about how good your cooking is! I'm very glad you enjoyed this much, Raymond and Dimitri. I could write the recipe down for you if you'd like. It's not nearly as complex as you may think. Oh, that's okay with you. I'm sorry for my rudeness. It's alright, Dimitri. I'll give you the recipe later. This is great, Alyssa. Did you use forest flowers for this? Ah, good catch as always, Max. It does help with the tanginess, wouldn't you agree? Yes, ma'am. It's very refreshing, Lady Alyssa. A little less sweet than I would have liked, but maybe that's just my sweet tooth standard. <laughs> but of course... <clears throat> well, now that everyone's made themselves comfortable, I suppose we should move on to the main subject at hand. I'm afraid that the situation is a lot more dire than I'd expected. I've heard from Alaric about the state of the Guardian Crystal, as well as your investigations thus far. Well, I can guarantee that my presence here will act as further, de further deterrence against a frontal assault from our enemies... The truth still remains that the crystal was not built to last this long. No. Okay. One second, y'all. Water time. That is, it was built with the protection of this region in mind, but not against active sabotage like what has transpired recently. Then it is just as I suspected. I'll take but it'll take but one concentrated nether blast to dismantle the entirety of the Guardian Crystal. Is that a, is it that serious already? But didn't you say the Guardian Crystal is still working well? I did, but it won't take much to destroy it for good, as Alex remarked. That is, while the crystal itself is safe for now, the amplifier rings have been badly corroded by the gradual distance from the infected soil. 
and I am afraid it is too little too late to stop the saboteur's operation, as I have planted this seed of discord all the way back when the crystal was still being forged in the glass chamber. Well, what would happen if the crystal failed? First the rings would rupture, then the suspensions will go kaput. Afterwards it will be in free fall. Then the entire area would be crushed. We need to move everyone away from the park just in case. Indeed. I've already informed our guildmaster to move everyone away from Venture Park towards the Market District in the case the worst does happen. So the people should be safe by then. Ah, and I also understand that you all will be visiting the Akai in a couple of days. Yes, ma'am. Rai and I were on there last week. Were there last week, and we experienced the same phenomenon with the Akai Shield. Yeah, I was there with them too. The shield suddenly went out for some reason. Yeah, we suspect that whoever did that there did it here also. I see. And who would you bring on this trip? Oh, uh, just us, ma'am. Good, then. Just a small team shall suffice. Be sure to scour the area for any clues you can gather. The rest of the mercenaries will keep the city safe while you're away. Now, as for Cassian... Hmm? What about him, ma'am? Alyssa then told everybody about your newfound abilities, that you're a null, how you could resonate with others. The others looked at you in awe as Alyssa asked you to brandish the sword she gifted you. Amazing! So Cassian can also use others' elemental magic just by resonating with them. You've also further enhanced my miniature GC to reflect his abilities. An ingenious and outstanding move. Aw, how you flatter me. You're also a genius yourself, Alex. As far as I'm concerned, people who can replicate the Guardian Crystal's properties are more than few and far between. You're too kind, Lady Alyssa. Wait, wait, help me out with something here, ma'am. You said that he could resonate with others. What's all that about? We're all taught that you can only resonate with your own element, so where did all that come from? Well, didn't she also say that Cassian is a null element? So it makes sense that he's not like most people where that rule applies to. I guess. How do you do that, then? For him, it's as simple as trying to resonate with how someone feels. All he needs to do is focus on that person's emotions. Then slowly but surely, you can feel his energy changing to adapt to the one he wishes to match with. With that said, however, it is only safe for him to copy a certain amount of spells from others. More than that would be harmful to his body and mind. Thank you know. And I take it that you want us to help him harness that power. Correct. Ideally, I'd like him to cultivate his power naturally, but given our current circumstances, he'd need all the help and guidance he can get from you all. Of course, I'd be more than happy to fulfill your request. I don't know about the others, though. I men, as long as I get to analyze Cassian while he's training. Sure, count me in. How about you, Cody? Oh, um, I'm fine with whatever you guys want to do, so I guess I'm in as well. Very well. Then it is decided. Though, I must warn you all that there is quite a caveat with Cassian's ability. Huh? Well, what is it, ma'am? As I mentioned, as Cassian can resonate with you, so will his magi adapt to yours. Well, meaning? He can feel what we felt, and it will affect him directly. Indeed, so please try to make peace with whatever turmoil remains in your heart, lest it eats your souls inside out, and Cassian will truly feel that pain as well. Well, sure, what's the worst that could happen? I mean, to say I'll happily oblige your request, ma'am. I see. Well, that should be all for the time being. Were we at my homestead, I would very much welcome you all for dinner, unless I still have some immediate business to attend to. I will meet with Alric to discuss our next course of action against the Nether Legion. Now, if you'd excuse me. Zoop. Be safe, ma'am. Thank you for the pleasantries, Lady Austria. I shall remember this day forever. Heh, <laughs> simp. Sh shut up, Rye. Heh. <laughs> well, let's take our leave, guys. All right. S so, what now? Well, want to head to the beach with me, Cassian? Isn't it a bit late to go there now? Your shark friend is probably not even around at this hour. Nah, I'm sure Fen's still around. He's got to do his patrols at night, too, yeah? Oh, are you spending the night there? Yep, it's a nice place to unwind and relax for the night, wouldn't you agree? I guess. I still prefer my bedroom, though. A lot warmer and cozier at night. You sure it's wise to stay overnight outside the guild, though? Hmm, we'll be fine, Max. Chill out, will ya? This ain't the first time I spent the night at the beach. Cassie will be fine. But... For all I care, just let them go on their date, Max. Well, alright, if you say so, Alex. <sighs> well, I still got stuff to do at the lab. Take care, all. Don't forget about the training tomorrow, Cassian. I, I won't. See ya, Al. So, you and Cassian are actually dating, Roy? 
I thought it was just an act or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I hmm, guess I forgot to bring that up with you guys, huh? Uh, honestly, with how much you two have been fooling around with each other, it's not that hard to notice. I don't really get what you find so exciting about that, but as long as it doesn't interfere with work, I don't mind. Ah, well, I guess there's no harm done. Well, we'll be heading off then. See you tomorrow. Okay. <clears throat> okay, take care, you two. See you, right, and don't forget to rest up well, Cassian. Thanks, guys. Bye! Hmm, let's go, Cassian. And so Ray held your hand as he led you towards the beach. It was a rather, rather uneventful walk as you both stole a glance at each other on occasions. Eventually, you arrived at the familiar beach hut. Hmm, we're here again. Mm-hmm, I figured you could use some time away from the city after everything today. How thoughtful of you, Ray. But you just want to sneak a date and night in with me, huh? Heh, <laughs> why, it's a nice little added bonus, wouldn't you agree? I tend to go here whenever I need to, I needed to catch a break. So you always go here whenever you're away. Hmm? Not always, of course, but it's nice to drop by here whenever I can. Because you get to meet Finn here? Finn? Sure, I guess, but what about him? Heh. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there, too, so it looks like we're going to get a second date with Rye. Very excited, y'all. All right, let me go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Ooh. Excuse me. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silvermoon. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Tresum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye